A huge bounce back week in Supercoach. 2297, could have been more if it wasn't for a couple of slackers. Up 35k spots to 13k overall. The actual number of our rank, it is what it is at this point, we're only two rounds in. But it feels good to have a week like this. So here's the team, in defense, Dawson led the way, unfortunately the only one to ton. Good on him for getting to the 110 though, because it even looked like he was going to struggle to get to a solid score at one point. Doherty just wasn't his night, couldn't find the footy nearly as much as he normally does. Kick-ins were shared around a lot, he only took 2 out of the 10. Jones, he had a concussion scare, but luckily he passed his test and played out the rest of the game. Jinbi, absolute tackle machine, did a good job nullifying Tom Green's impact. McKenna real solid again. Constable could use the ball better, but he's finding a lot of it, which is good. Wilmot, better. It helped that Kitty Common was out. And Cowan just ticking along. Probably going to be a slow burn with those types of scores each week, but that's okay, as long as he plays. The midfield is where it's at. Rory Laird needed redemption, and he absolutely delivered. 39 touches, 4 marks, 8 tackles, a 147, and as our vice captain, beautiful. Clayton Oliver filled up the stat sheet, a 135, love that. Bontempelli, only he and English tunned in what was a disgusting dog side. Feels like Bevo has lost the plot over there, throwing the magnets around. Jack McRae is being absolutely screwed right now. Thankfully, Bont hasn't been affected yet. Now onto the mid prices. Oh my goodness, Will Setterfield, how good! 28 touches, nine tackles, a goal. Took down Tuke a number of times. What a performance! Selected him as a big pod. Risky play, but it's paid off, and now he's looking like a must-have, so it's nice to have one of those picks go your way. Hopper bounced back in a big way. Unfortunately, had a nasty knee injury in the fourth quarter. He played through it, but now he's doubtful for the Collingwood clash. Fingers crossed he gets up for that one, but we'll just have to see in a couple days' time. Warple was real solid in a Hawthorne side that's probably going to experience a, a number of those games this season. Ashcroft, he had a great bounce back game. Rising Star nominee for this week. Mackenzie, CBAs went way down. So that's real unfortunate. Hopefully that won't be the case every week. I know there's a lot of young players that Sam Mitchell probably wants to put through in that midfield, but... We need Mackenzie to be one of those guys. And on the bench, Philippou didn't touch the ball as much, but hit the scoreboard a number of times. Traded Chesser to him, probably could have been Chandler, but I guess what I like about Philippou is that he is a favorite over there. His job security is going to be real safe. So I guess I went for that. Baker, a little bit better, but again, the dogs were disgusting, so... It is what it is there. And Noah Long, another solid game from him. On to the rocks. Marshall, great bounce back game. Darcy, what the hell happened? This is the same guy that dropped a 178 against North last year. This time around, goodness gracious. Couldn't buy a hit out to advantage. The midfield was horrible. He had less ruck contests in general. He was in the negatives up to half time. Just an absolute howler of a night for Darcy. But I think with their matchup this week against West Coast, who are led by Bailey Williams as their first ruck, I think I'll keep the faith. He better bounce back. I'm not going to lie, I have a stupid urge to chuck the C on Darcy if the VC doesn't work out, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And the forward line, Dunkley, Rosie, Taranto, Golden, all good. Majority of people have them. So however they score, it is what it is. Of course, we still want good scores out of them, but it won't affect our overall rank that much. Rosie had to take a concussion test, which he passed and played out the rest of the game. 
took another one after the game which Port's injury report said he passed with no concerns so that's positive news there Tanner Bruin has to go so you have to say a lot of time on ground nowhere near as much inside mid time as the previous week it's a shame because he has potential for sure but just not getting the opportunity that he had in the preseason and Sheasel absolute gun his composure late in the game against Freo was unreal and on the bench Green Davey not expecting too much out of them as long as they play and tick along that's okay Tavy was in the mid 40s at half time so it's disappointing they disappeared in the second half but that's fine for trades this week Bruin obviously has to go my number one priority is Nick Dacos. It's going to be such a pain watching him any longer without him in the team. His demand for the ball, his work rate is unmatched. It's so frustrating because he's just everywhere all the time. So he needs to be in the team. My dream two trades to bring in Dacos would have been Bruin and Jones to Cade Chandler and Dacos. But 445k in the bank, obviously nowhere near enough. So what I'm thinking of doing, which I don't endorse, is trading out Doherty. It's just the way the team is set up right now, it leaves Doherty the most expendable. I think everyone here is performing well enough that they don't need to be traded, except Darcy, who I'm keeping the faith in, particularly because of their upcoming matchup, and either way there'd be no possible way to get Darcy to Dacos. So it leaves Doherty. He's doing fine, he will be fine, but it just works for me to bring in Dacos, who is an absolute must-have at this point. So what I'm gonna do here is Bruin to, or we'll just get Dacos in because he's right there, and then Bruin goes to Zeebel, who I also see as a priority, so it works out beautifully. I have experimented with the boost, possibly going Liam Jones up to Jack Bowes, but he's only played one game, so we can give him another look as well as Crozier. And obviously you can give Jones another look and see if he's worth trading out next week. So we'll do these two trades for now and we could save another boost which is great, we'll stay on five. So this will be the team heading into round three. Really liking how it looks besides no Chandler which is a bummer but we'll just have to accept that we're going to miss out on him. We're pretty good everywhere else so we'll take that. Captain choices are tough this week, so tempted to VC Dacos against Richmond. Captain could go to Laird in the showdown, Oliver against Sydney, both tough midfields to go up against, but Laird did pretty good in their last showdown. Oliver, he's that guy, he has a good record against Sydney in their past few matches, so I don't mind leaving the C on him. Like I said before, I have a stupid urge to make a massively risky play and chuck the C on Darcy. Could happen, we'll consider that if Dacos doesn't work out. We'll see, we'll see, but we'll leave it on Clary for now. But that will do it, hopefully you all had a good week as well, good luck to you all for round 3, and see you in the next video.